The city's beautiful. This is so cool. We kind of have mixed feelings about that experience. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that is unlike anything I've ever tasted. Good morning from Florence. It's our day one. We're up, we're out, we're ready to tackle the day. It's a beautiful morning. Let's go! Our first activity in Florence is climbing to the top of the Duomo. And the Duomo is actually more officially known as the Cathedral Santa Maria del Fiore, but everyone calls it the Duomo, and it's one of the most iconic sites in Florence. Yeah, it's actually a double dome. It's also the world's largest masonry dome. And when they built it, they drew inspiration from the Pantheon. Cool. It's 463 steps to the top, and there's no elevator. <laughs> Your head's almost hitting. I know. It's really close. <laughs> this dome was made for ants. And this is so awesome. It's cool to see the city from above and just see like the architecture, all the roofs are the same color. It's beautiful. <laughs> the city's beautiful. This is so cool. There's a lot of trees too, and there's the mountains and hills in the background. Mm. Worth it, worth the climb, for oh, show. <laughs> That was absolutely beautiful and such a great way to see the city and the really great way to just kick off our trip, kind of seeing everything all at once. Yeah. So we bought tickets in advance and it was 40 euros for both of us and you basically pick the time slot you want. Um, it's called like skip the line, but I don't think you skipped a line. It was more just like maybe some people don't pick a time and they show up whenever and they get to go in between groups or you actually pick your time and you get to go in close to that time. Yeah, as always with the super touristy stuff, make sure to get there early. So we picked the earliest one we could, right? Yeah, 8.30 a.m. Yeah, one for the temperature. It's a little cooler up there in the morning. And then also when you're going up the stairs, some of the parts are you sh are shared with the people coming down. So, <laughs> and it's pretty tight. It was built a long time ago. So I'm like almost bumping my head on stuff. Yeah, so the earlier you go, the less people are coming down when you're yeah. going up. And it just makes it a much easier your experience on our way down we had to keep stopping and like yeah. people would take turns like, going so I don't know I mean it's just one thing to keep in mind because it is kind of tight in there so if you're claustrophobic I would not yeah. recommend this activity <laughs> one alternative option or additional option is to go up in the tower which is right behind us I don't know if you can see it but you basically get the same view but you get a view of the Duomo so it was kind of hard for us to decide which one to do but I thought the the stairs going up to the Duomo seemed really cool and going in the church seemed cool so we picked that one but that is another option if you want a cool
spending the morning just walking around Florence, checking out all the architecture, the sights, the scenery. We're currently in front of a church called Santa Croce, which you may have seen before. It's very famous. It's in a lot of photos of Florence. I feel like the farther you stand away from it, it almost looks fake, like it was just drawn on. It's absolutely beautiful. One interesting fact about this church is that there are 16 family chapels inside. So what that means is there were 16 well-off families in the past that basically had a chapel decorated and in their honor. There's also a few famous people buried here, Michelangelo, Machiavelli, Galileo, you may have heard of them. Hmm. <laughs> uh, but it costs eight euro to go inside, but we decided not to today just to save a bit of money. For lunch, we came to Al Antico Vinal supposed to be the best sandwich in Florence, the best sandwich maybe in the world, right? Everyone I know yeah. has told me we had to go here. Yeah. I've heard such good things and I'm so pumped about it's, this. Oh, it's like warm and like, <laughs> mm, looks so Just good. Just watching them make it was so fun. <laughs> yeah. So we got the Dante and the Inferno and I don't remember which one's which, I don't but know. <laughs> this one has, they're both pork. This one has like a spicy cream on it and then this one has like a truffle spread. Mm -hmm. And it's like probably the first sandwich we've really had here that's had like so much stuff on it. Yeah. I'm just, oh, I'm so excited. Heck yeah. So much flavor. Yeah. Mm. Oh, these were five euros each and they're really big. That's so cheap. Such an awesome deal. Got two waters with it, 12 euro. So good down to the last bite. Yeah, that's officially the best sandwich I've ever had. Agreed. <laughs> so flavorful. I've never had a sandwich with so much flavor. The meat was delicious. Yeah. Sauces were super good. Yeah, there's lots of stuff on the sandwich. So you got all kinds of flavors. And the bread was like crispy on the outside, but like soft on the inside. The bread was, was a little chewier than I thought it would be, but it forced me to eat slower and actually yeah. enjoy each bite versus just like. I like the chewiness of it. <laughs> yeah, it was so good. We loved it so much that we're going to go get one for later. <laughs> We ended up getting the Dante sandwich to go. Even though we loved both of them, I think we loved this one slightly more. It had the truffle spread on it and it was just so Ooh. good. <laughs> and just so you know, it's cash only and it gets really busy, but there's three locations all across the street from each yeah, other. Yeah, they're kind of in a triangle. So yeah. you just hop over to the other one if one's busy. So we just had the best sandwich supposedly in Florence. And now we're about to go try supposedly the best gelato in Florence. And I am so pumped, although it may ruin us for the rest of the trip. <laughs> All right, here we go. Supposedly the best gelateria de neri. I got some caramello one. Oh my gosh, it right looks there. like literally just like, ch like just a looks, chunk of caramel. Looks like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, it looks so good. I got a chocolatey one. There's a few chocolate ones. And then I got this one called Malaga. I'm not really sure, it has some raisins in it. It looks delicious. <laughs> it is delicious. And I got pistachio and nochoa and then also that caramel one. And we got the biggest size, <laughs> I think, because I just wanted this cone. Yeah. It's huge. But like, just the texture is different than any others. Like, it just seriously looks like a chunk of caramel. It's so smooth and creamy. Uh huh. It's, it's not, not even cold. It's not that cold. Oh. Did you taste it? No, I haven't tried it yet. It. Oh my god. Like, it's not even cold like gelato. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that is unlike anything I've ever tasted. This is the best. It's like they literally just like let a caramel kind of like slowly melt and then they just threw it on. Like that. That's what it is. Oh my gosh. Wow. I don't know if I can eat all of this. This is so much. It's very rich. And the caramel's so rich. Oh, wow. <sighs> we kind of have mixed feelings about that experience. We started out very excited, like, wow, the, the caramel and the chocolate specifically. We're so, these are like crazy, they're not even that, they're not even cold, they're so rich. But the richness wore off very fast, and yeah. we kind of started to feel a little like, Ooh. Yeah, I was like, oh man, this is so different, like, oh, this, it's, it's so different, it's even better than gelato, it's like, it's so like rich. It's like fudge, and, or like, yeah, I don't know. Oh, this is going to be awesome. But. It was just too much, I think. Yeah. Like Adam had two of those kind of flavors. I had one and I couldn't even finish it. And I always finish my gelato, but I had to like take off the caramel towards the end because I couldn't, I couldn't eat it all. I was feeling so sick from how rich it was because it was just so thick. Don't get me wrong, absolutely delicious. Oh yeah. So good. But it's like when you're a kid and you have, like it, it, to me it tasted like the frosting for cakes. 
but, but much but higher way, quality. But way better. But way better. But like you, when you're a kid, like if you had one of those, and you're like, oh man, I'm gonna pound this right now. And so I kind of did, but like I feel kind of dumb and like. Yeah, it, just... I don't think it was actually gelato. No. I, I don't know what it was. We, we, I tried googling and I couldn't figure it out, yeah. but. Yeah, it was just very rich. <laughs> it was very, very good. But be careful if you're gonna get it. I honestly would have just preferred like a little bit on the top, not a whole scoop of it. Yeah, like a spoonful maybe. Because it was really good when you mixed it with the gelato. Yeah, by itself it was just a lot. Yeah. So we feel like we didn't do that place justice. Yeah. So I think we might go back later and just get like a small one to share. That way we can actually experience it in its true form. Yeah. And then maybe do a little compare and contrast with another spot later. Yeah. Cause, we'll see if we can like recover. Because <laughs> the flavor I did get was really good. Yeah. The two I got were amazing. Yeah. Amazing. And I would just like to try the full experience. Yeah. Maybe a more normal gelato experience, I guess. Same. So we are at the Airbnb. We're working on our computers and we wanted some coffee. So we are trying. This is a classic Italian coffee maker type deal called the Mocha Express is what it's called. I think it's a percolator is the real name for it. Um, but I've always wanted to try one and here we are. Okay, so the espresso is kind of in the middle. You put the water in there and as it boils, it comes up and it comes out that hole there. And there's your coffee. All right, here we go. Let's give it a shot. Oh, that's pretty good. I like that. So we ended up making about five or six of those coffees. So we are jazzed. We also got some good rest, made some room in our stomachs, and we are now ready for dinner. Yes. All right, for dinner, I am very excited about this. We are at E Tuscany. And when you come to Florence, it's a very common dish to get is a big steak. Like they're famous, I guess, for their steak. And so that's what we have tonight. And this steak in front of me is like the size of a bike seat. It is massive. I think it's the biggest steak I've ever had. And you get all these uh, veggies on the side. You get potato, peppers, uh, some zucchini, and some bread. But look at this thing. They put salt on it. They have some olive oil on it. <laughs> Can't wipe the smile off my face. I'm so excited. This is massive. So we got this, um, like the Florentine steak for two and it was 80 euros. So it's very steep, but you do get a good amount of stuff on the side and it's massive. And we couldn't come to Florence and not have steak, which is one of our favorite foods in the whole wide world. Man, that's the best, <laughs> best steak I've had in a long time. That was delicious. That was bomb. It put me to sleep. <laughs> I'm so tired now. I was so energized and hyped up from all that caffeine and then just ate all that meat and now I'm ready to go to bed. It was delicious though, man. I highly recommend getting a steak when you're in Florence. It is more expensive, but it's one of like the local cuisines and dishes and so you just have to try it. Unless you don't eat meat. And then there's a lot of other delicious things for you here like gelato. <laughs> but don't forget with the steak when you're in Florence, when you get all the meat you can off the bone, pick up the bone and start. Oh, no, 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 no. He told us we could eat with our hands. We didn't think that would be good to, for the vlog. It might be gross. <laughs> he said it's okay so in Florence. So we ate with our though. hands. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Even after that delicious, beautiful, but giant steak dinner, we saved just enough room for a little bit of gelato. So we're gonna go to two gelato spots tonight. The first is one we have not been to yet, and the second is gonna be a redo from the one from earlier, so we can just try all gelato flavors this time instead of that delicious, but very rich, caramely thing. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna practice something called self-control and portion <laughs> control now. Boo. We've been eating a lot, as you probably can tell, and it's starting to catch up with us a bit. We're feeling very, very full, and then we're still eating more, and we just kind of feel sick at the end of each day. So we're gonna try to start getting smaller portions. We'll see how long it lasts. Yeah. But we're at La Strega Nochola. Sorry, stripping. <laughs> this is supposed to be one of the best gelato places in town and is right by the Duomo. So if you go to the Duomo and then you want to come somewhere afterwards, I hear this place is great and it's not just like a tourist trap because usually places right by sites are tourist traps. It's got all the makings inside of uh, legit gelato. Like they got the tin, mm. the, the covers on top. Oh. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they have the tins on top, which apparently mm. means it's a it's really legit. good gelato place because they're trying to control the temperatures very well. Yeah. Just something we've picked up on our time in Italy. We're gelato experts mm. now. You should try this. Uh-oh. So what flavor is that? That's the cream one. It's really good. Oh yeah. So we got one, one uh, latte or something. <laughs> That's not what it's called. But it's uh, 
it's like a Mars ma mascarpone cheese yeah. and like a, a cream cream yeah, yeah. Right? and then I got the nochola I think I got the nochola because it's it's in the name so it's got to be it's got to be their real deal right and I got pistachio and then that cream one as well and the cream one's the one I just freaked out about because it tastes like cream cheese frosting it was it's so, so good, good. It's nochola's bomb too mm. I think this is my favorite oh, yeah. hazelnut I've tasted. It's just like the the best blend of nutty but sweet and creamy. Mm -hmm. It's really, really good. No chunks in these, but that's okay. The flavor is really good and creaminess and texture. And yeah, this pistachio is really awesome. This place might be very high up on the rankings. Mm -hmm. We're back. <laughs> Gelateria de Neri, giving it a second try. <laughs> So I did confirm something. I confirmed some suspicions. I asked him, I was like, oh, what's the Carmelo one? Because I wanted to hear what they said it was. And then he gave me a sample and I was like, oh, I've had enough of this one today. <laughs> but I put it with my I put it with my other gelato and it'll be really good because it's like the right amount. Yeah. He said it's caramel fudge, which it blows my mind that that's something that people would just eat on a cone. I mean, we were one of we them, it. but it was an accident. <laughs> But I mean, like we said earlier, it was really delicious. It's just very, very rich. Yeah. So we got actual gelato this time. Yep. I got nochola, pistachio, and then I got the same like cream flavor that we got at the last place because I loved it and I want to try another one. <laughs> yeah. I got the bonatello. I got a caramel one. Love caramel and the stracciatella, a classic. Mm. Very good. Very, very creamy. Mm -hmm. We've officially finished gelateria. Day Neri for the second time today. <laughs> Adam, drum roll. Which one was your favorite out of the two? Both delicious, both yum, but I have to give it to Strega Nochola. Me too. <laughs> I almost feel a little sad to say that because the other place is a podcast we listen to. It's his favorite gelato ever. So I like feel like I was almost like wanting to love it the most but it's yeah. okay if we don't love it the most yeah. we're allowed to have our own opinions and i don't think he actually tried this other spot but yeah strega nochola was amazing they were both amazing yeah the both of them were like spot on with like texture creaminess i just think that i like the flavors of the other place a little bit better yeah so. we had that flavor the buen notello something like that yeah, buen talenti. Yeah. Buen talenti. yeah it was better at the strega nochola um you could just taste the cheese more and it was like creamy and but again both are absolutely out of this world. You can't world go delicious. wrong go, trying. I, I would say you have to try both. Yeah. You have to try for both. sure. And then you can decide for yourself. Um, I would not be mad if we went back to both of them. So. <laughs> Same here. But we have other places we're going to try tomorrow. Two more tomorrow and they both come very highly recommended so I'm excited. It may, it may get even better than this. Who knows? <laughs> and now we're going to walk off all of our gelato <laughs> and steak and check out the city at night. So far I love Florence at night. The streets are all lit up. There's a ton of people out. The energy's really like fun and upbeat. And there's like all this live music. We don't know if it's a special thing or if it's always like this, but it's really, really cool. Yeah. Day one of Florence is done. Had an awesome and delicious day and can't wait to do it again tomorrow.